Hello, this is Greg from SharePoint Maven. And in this video, I want to talk about uh, internet, SharePoint internet, one of my uh, favorite topics. But specifically, I want to talk about the need for the uh, SharePoint internet. So the argument I often hear from uh, you know, my clients uh, and loyal followers is that you know, uh, do we really need an internet, all right? The question is, do we really need an internet? And the argument uh, usually goes like this. Hey, Greg, we already uh, are using, you know, obviously, you know, Microsoft Teams and OneDrive. Why do we really need uh, to set up a SharePoint uh, intranet? Uh, so let me explain. So that's essentially what I'm going to do in this video. I would like to answer those uh, arguments and uh, show you a bit of demonstration uh, that will hopefully, if you are debating on whether or not you need an internet, hopefully I will be uh, able to change your mind. First of all, um, before I provide the arguments, I kind of want to uh, go back to the basics uh, and uh, explain kind of uh, the various components that you might already be using. Uh, so uh, you might already be using Microsoft Teams, and that's usually the common argument. Uh, we already use Microsoft Teams, and we have a bunch of Teams, and we chat, and uh, again, we have a bunch of Teams and associated SharePoint sites, and um, you know, and uh, obviously the files, uh, when you click on the files tab within Microsoft Teams, the files are in SharePoint. So uh, we kind of already use SharePoint, right? We kind of already uh, live in Microsoft Teams. We kind of already collaborate and chat with our colleagues and teams. Uh, likewise, um, another argument I hear is that, um, you know, we, we already use OneDrive, all right? We already use Teams, obviously, and SharePoint as a result, but we also use OneDrive. And uh, what is really the reason for, um, you know, kind of having a SharePoint intranet if, uh, you know, the personal stuff lives here, and then, you know, the, uh, you know, team stuff lives in Microsoft Teams. So let me now provide a few arguments uh, in defense of SharePoint uh, intranet. So uh, here's the deal. Uh, I mean, if you already have a bunch of teams, right, and you know, you, I suspect you you might have already quite a few. Um, I'm sure you have maybe a team for each and every project, each and every uh, you know department uh, and uh, function, you know, business unit within your organization, and that's great. Uh, but Teams are really set up for collaboration, right? Teams is where uh, collaboration is supposed to occur within a given project, all right, maybe, or maybe within a given department. Also, um, Teams kind of assumes, and this is not necessarily the case in, in all scenarios, but for example, uh, projects, right? Maybe, you know, departments like HR and, you know, other department functions that you have, right? They will kind of be permanent teams, but, you know, projects, uh, projects come and go. And, you know, when we're done with the project, uh, you can actually uh, archive, all right? So one of the um, functionalities in Microsoft Teams is the uh, ability to archive a team, right? Make it an archive, make it read only. So that kind of assumes the temporary nature of the, um, you know, o o of a given team. Again, this might not necessarily apply to all the teams, but uh, that's what usually happens with uh, temporary uh, projects that uh, yeah, you might have. In contrast, uh, the SharePoint intranet is meant to be a permanent location for uh, information, uh, all right, whether maybe it's some, uh, you know, project stuff or maybe it's uh, the stuff that, uh, you know, the, the content that uh, belongs to a specific department. But the idea behind uh, SharePoint intranet that it's more for permanent, uh, right, it's not really a project-based uh, kind of uh, resource, if you will. Uh, the projects, the collaboration occurs in teams, that's fine. Uh, but the idea behind SharePoint Internet that uh, it, you know, it has this permanent nature to it. So that's the big difference. Uh, another reason for having a SharePoint Internet is that you can build an Internet according to your uh, org chart. Uh, with teams, we kind of have this uh, 
flat architecture, if you will, right? Uh, you cannot nest a team within a team, for example. Um, essentially, whether it's a team, you know, project team, or uh, maybe a, a client team, or uh, a department, some sort of team for a specific department, um, you know, essentially it's a flat architecture, right? There is really no hierarchy here. Uh, it's just a bunch of teams that you're going to have, and this is where you chat, this is where you collaborate on documents and so on. Uh, with SharePoint, uh, we have an ability to uh, organize it according to an org uh, chart. Uh, now, in SharePoint, we still honor uh, what's called a flat architecture. All right, so we don't really have subsites. We don't nest a site, uh, a subsite inside of the other site. We use the concept of a hub site. So it's a flat architecture, but in terms of navigation, we can actually organize all of our sites. So all of the sites, they are kind of independent entities, but in terms of navigation, just like I did here, you see under departments, I created a heading, and this is just a label. This is just a heading, uh, North America, and then all the North America departments, and, and so on. So you can actually organize it, uh, navigation-wise at least, uh, into um, you know some logical hierarchies, if you will, according to your org chart. Uh, in addition, in addition, uh, right, uh, we have the uh, hub site functionality which is essentially what this is, but we also have the ability to create multiple hubs and we can also nest a hub within the other hub. So if you are part of a large organization and let's just say, you know, uh, you you are part yeah, of a large organization, maybe several thousand users, in that case, you might benefit from multiple hubs. So you might have a hub for each and every department consistent of um, their sites and then you can nest that hub into Kind of the corporate hub all right so we have that ability to nest hubs and this is something I actually recorded on one of my other videos uh so check check it out on my uh, channel uh but a uh, long story short um the sharepoint internet allows us to an extent to build some sort of you know uh, hierarchies if you will according to the org chart again with microsoft teams uh this is not possible uh, another reason for building a SharePoint intranet, it could be used uh, as a getaway, uh, you know, uh, to, to other sites that you have within your organization. So uh, here is a use case. Uh, let's say I'm the new employee and I have been presented with, um, you know, with uh, the URL for the intranet. So at least I have somewhere to go to. Uh, to obtain some information, but also I can pretty much see the sites that um, are available, all right, that exist. And another thing you can do here, uh, you can set up audience targeting. So you can actually target certain sites uh, to different groups of users. So if you are a part of, uh, let's say, uh, US employees, right, you only get to see sites for, um, you know, for US and so on. So uh, the bottom line is um, essentially an internet would allow, let's say, new employees to to see what's available in terms in terms of the different sites, and it doesn't necessarily mean that um, they will have access to those sites, right? So they might need to request access to certain sites, but at least they will kind of see the roadmap, if you will, uh, the site map, right, and of all the sites that exist. Uh, within the organization on a given hub and be able to access uh, them or request access accordingly. Uh, the next reason for having a SharePoint intranet is that uh, it kind of assumes that the information on the intranet is uh, latest and greatest and more reliable. Uh, let me uh, give you a use case. Again, with uh, Teams, right, because the Teams, by their nature, they are set up for collaboration. Uh, let's say HR is developing a a new policy, all right, for the uh, human resources department. So obviously those files will be, um, you know, those uh, policies, uh, you know, will be stored maybe in a private HR team and the HR team will collaborate on those. Uh, but these are the documents, you know, obviously because they reside in a private HR team, they will only be visible to that team and no one else. And besides, right, you might also have multiple revisions uh, you know, uh, of the same, uh, you know, document, right? Because the HR team is collaborating on them. 
uh, in contrast, uh, the uh, you know the internet kind of again assumes that everything that's published to the internet is final, latest, and greatest. So the workflow in your case could be that uh, you know the uh, HR team will essentially uh, collaborate on documents and draft them uh, on their uh, you know, teams on their private team sites, but then the final copy will be posted uh, to the internet. You know, just by being on the internet, uh, again, you obviously need to develop the proper process uh, for pub publishing those documents to the internet, but it kind of assumes that uh, whatever you publish to the internet um, is, is accurate and uh, final uh, and the latest copy of what it is that you're looking for. Another reason for having a SharePoint internet is the fact that uh, you might actually utilize SharePoint internet for your uh, internal you know, uh, company communication and business processes. For example, uh, human resources, uh, every single organization, whether it's a large organization, medium size, even small businesses, you know, have some sort of HR uh, function and uh, obviously human resources always needs to share information uh, and various policies and procedures and employee handbooks and vacation request forms, uh, maybe uh, some sort of um, uh, onboarding process, uh, whatever uh, whatever those um, you know functions, whatever those processes are. Again, this is not something that's going to be happening uh, within the uh, Microsoft Teams because once again, the Teams are for two-way collaboration. Uh, instead, um, you are probably going to uh, upload your company policies, let's say, to a human resources site uh, and maybe link them up. Uh, same with employee handbooks. Uh, maybe you will have a vacation request form uh, created in Microsoft uh, Forms, and then uh, you will link it up uh, on, from the SharePoint site. Uh, finally, maybe you have some sort of automation going on and an onboarding process. And again, stuff like this, uh, the place, um, you know, the location, I guess, for all this information is not on, you know, on team sites and teams, uh, the, the right place for it would be the internet because again, internet uh, is the employee facing uh, the communication hub, if you will, uh, with reliable information accessible by, you know, mostly all the employees within the organization. Another reason for having an internet, uh, you can uh, actually create a dedicated site uh, for the knowledge base, all right? So you might create a site um, to, to maintain all the knowledge within your organization, and it could be documents with metadata or you know pages with uh, various information. I actually uh, uh, published a separate uh, article and, uh, and a video on my uh, channel on how to create knowledge base, how to maintain it, how to uh, create a, a knowledge article template and so on, so feel free to check it out. Uh, but again, uh, the you know with knowledge base for example uh, there is really no collaboration going on uh, or two-way collaboration it's more for um, you know content update and uh, presentation uh, to your employees so once again the right spot for it would be the uh, SharePoint uh, internet and finally um, the last I guess reason or argument I wanted to mention is the fact that uh, SharePoint Internet, uh, by design, by its nature, is meant for the employees, so it's accessible by uh, all the employees. Uh, again, let's uh, let me mention a use case. Let's say you join uh, an organization, you are a new employee. Uh, right away, you might not necessarily have access to uh, all the teams, right? You probably will need to be added by the you know team owners or maybe your IT department so you might not necessarily have access to any teams um, you know when you just uh, start working for for a company uh, this uh, would not be um, the same situation with the internet because by design by its nature uh, the idea behind the internet is uh, that the sites are available uh, essentially at least on a read-only basis to everyone within the organization 
organization, right? The whole nature of the internet is the employee facing component. So uh, whether it's the main side, the home site, or any of those other employee facing communication sites, like again, you know, human resources, maybe some other departments, the idea behind all this uh, sites is that, um, you know, in terms of security, they are open to everyone on a read-only basis. So uh, unlike with Microsoft Teams, where you might eventually be added, uh, if you're working on a certain project, you're part of a particular department, uh, the idea behind the internet is that uh, it's open to everyone. Uh, and uh, this is a pretty much a place where uh, uh, everyone is welcome on day one. So that's all I, I really wanted to mention in this video. Uh, in case if you're wondering if you your organization should have an internet, hopefully I was able to provide you with a few uh, arguments. Um, and uh, for now, thank you very much for watching this video. As always, happy to see you on my blog, SharePointMaven.com, as well as my YouTube channel. Thank you very much. Have a great rest of the day. Goodbye.